It's Tuesday evening on TwoCountry.net. Rob Fielder in the studio. So how are we? That's Craig Campbell, and he leads the way in two hours of wonderful country music for you tonight. Some top tunes I'm really excited to play this evening. And I'm going to be talking to Damien Horn, one-third of the band The Farm. Very excited to be chatting with Damien in just a little while. Up for you now, Brad Paisley. You do the math. Black Hawk on your favourite country music radio station. It's Tuesday evening with me, Rob, and my very special guest, Damien Horn. Welcome to Two Country, and many thanks for taking the time to talk to us this evening. Yeah, no problem, no problem. Oh, afternoon where you are, isn't it? Yes, it is. <laughs> afternoon. <laughs> How's the weather been? It's been quite cool in Nashville, isn't it? It is. It's pretty cool and windy. The sun is out today, so that's a good thing. And, and who knows, tomorrow it might be snowing. It kind of changes from time to time. <laughs> that sounds very much like being in the UK. <laughs> <laughs> well, Damien, look, welcome to Two Country. It really is a pleasure to, to have you on the station with us. Well, thank you. I'm, I'm excited about uh, being on the station. I'd, l I'd like to really talk about the way that you all got together as, as the farm, because you come from all of you came from very diverse and very different backgrounds um and the way you come together very different from most bands and it's been described as being a very organic process can you tell us a bit about that uh yeah it's kind of like you said uh we all come kind of come from different uh, you know backgrounds musically uh nick hoffman uh is a bone dry country boy from Minnesota who grew up just listening to old country standards, you know, and uh, and country music is all pretty much he, he he knew most of his life until his early teens. And Krista is from upstate New York, and uh, she grew up uh, listening to classics and standards, and she also has a big opera and jazz background. And and I'm from North Carolina, and I grew up listening to a lot of old school country, I mean old school soul music. Mm -hmm. And uh, we, we all moved to Nashville about 10 years ago and were writers in town and performing and doing, you know, doing music. And we we just had a mutual friend between the three of us. We all knew of each other, but never like spent any time with each other. But in Nashville, it's kind of such a melting pot for music and writers. Uh, we ended up getting together by just having a mutual friend. And we we all sat down and wrote a song together. And actually, that first song that we wrote uh, became our first single once we decided to um, start a band. Yeah. I mean, you, you were kind of opening for the likes of John Legend. Uh, was yes. kind of switching to country music from a full time perspective, was that ever something you'd really ever considered? Uh, no, I mean, I've always loved country songs. That was like my, my love about country music. I love the songwriting um, part of it, but I never saw myself as a uh, as a country artist until I, you know, just had the opportunity to do so. You know, before I was touring with John Legend and uh, doing that whole thing, but I was always continuing to write country music in Nashville. And uh, and then now I'm a part of the farm, which has been exciting and, and a new journey for me, but a, a fun one and a great one. <laughs> so you were brought together for this, this writing session and Nick brought something very different to a writing session, not the normal thing that you'd bring. Yes, you know, uh, you know, everybody kind of showed up with their guitars. It's probably, you know, three guitars at the time. And um, we had a fourth writer uh, who was with us at the time. It was the mutual friend we all had. His name was Danny Myrick, who also uh, co-produced uh, the album. And um, Nick shows up with a fiddle, you know, and, and we're like, where's, where's your guitar, man? And he's like, oh, you know, I got a couple ideas on a fiddle. So we kind of just... We're like, all right, let's see how this goes. And, you know, it's not the typical way to start, you know, songs, but uh, he started off with a fiddle riff and we just kind of built around that and, and went from there. And that kind of led to the birth of Home Sweet Home. Yeah, it did. You know, and, and writing a lot of times, especially for us, you know, we had never all even been in the same room together at one time. So when you're getting to know people and, and, and trying to write with somebody you've never met before, it kind of starts off like a therapy session. You start talking about, you know, things and, Find, try to find common ground and we all realized really quick we had really strong uh roots and uh pride pride about where we came from and so home sweet home just seemed like the, the perfect topic to start out for a first song i kind of have this image of you in the room and all kind of doing the uh hi i'm damien yeah yes exactly <laughs> hi I'm damien uh, i like long walks on the beach and you know it's just like you kind of it's just a get to know you process because it helps you put your guard down because, you know, writing songs is such a vulnerable thing. You know, it's it's vulnerable in a lot of ways because you're sharing a part of yourself. And then also, you know, you're with people sometimes you've never even met before. So it's, sometimes it's hard to open up. So 
it's kind of like an icebreaker. Mm, definitely bearing your soul. Yes, yes. Well, Home Sweet Home, I mean, when that song was, was released, I, I think you recorded that song as a, a bit of an experiment. Yes, we did. When we, we recorded, we first of all, when we went to the studio, we kind of camped out, you know, uh, just kind of rock band st style. We just went in there and uh, we didn't really have any set time or set goals or ideas. We just wanted to be creative. And uh, when we wrote the song originally, uh, you know, I came up with a melody for the, the verses. And then so I was singing on the verses and then Nick was like, well, what about doing this for the chorus? And he kind of sang it. So on our rough demo, you kind of hear, you know, me singing in the verse and Krista sings harmony there and then Nick sings lead on the, the choruses. And so when we went to the studio. We just kind of adopted that same idea and kept it kept it the way that it was. It just worked for us. Because at the time, you keep in mind, we didn't even have any plans of being a band. It was just like, let's record this music and just see where it goes. Yeah, yeah. And because I, I guess you didn't have any uh, set roles within your gathering, I suppose. It wasn't as if someone was, was definitely the lead singer. And, and so that was a very organic process as well. Right. It, it really was. You know, just like you said, there was no, you know, there was even no idea of becoming a band. There was no you know, uh, talk of, you know, hey, let's form this band. So there was no roles like this is going to be the lead singer and you're going to always do this and you do this. And we just did what came naturally for each one of us. So let's just talk about when that song was finally released for, for Radio Airplay. I mean, when it hit the airwaves, it <laughs> hit it with a bang, let's be honest. Yes. And landed you a top 20. Yeah, it did. And, and, and we were so shocked because, you know, you know, you... It was less than a, a year's time later after we wrote the song that, you know, we, had, we got a deal and, and it was being sent to radio and uh, it was all happening so fast. And when it hit radio, it was it was really surreal for us and, and a shock for us that, it, you know, it was received the way that it was just birthed out of this thing that we just at just one day getting together with people you never even knew and just writing a song. And, uh, you know, we started getting the comparisons to Little Big Town and other trios and country groups and and. It just then it started becoming real. It's like, okay, this is this might have some stand power. Yeah. So you never expected it to to do that well. Well, I mean, we we felt the music was good. That's kind of what kept us writing. We 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 enjoyed what we were creating, but like, it's it's still it's still hard to you know to put music out there and then really understand or know uh, how people are going to receive it because what resonates with me, you know, you you never know, you know, what resonates with the masses and it changes from time to time. All we knew is that it felt good to us. Mm. So we continue to keep writing and to keep making music. And when we, we put it out there, it seemed to connect with people as well. So at what point, Damien, did, did you decide, hey, let's do this. Let's become a band. This is a probably about, um, you know, uh, six or seven months after um, we first wrote together. You know, we had accumulated uh, maybe five or six songs after that that we really you know, had that same kind of feel and, and uh, you know, labels started getting interested because we were demoing these things around town and, you know, people get word and they hear it and they kept asking us, were we a band? And we're like, no, we're not a band. We're just, you know, writing music. And then, so we started getting some real interest and then we, you know, we, we talked it over with each other, you know, with friends of ours and, and, you know, a good friend of ours was telling us one time, he's like, if you ever have the opportunity to catch lightning in a bottle, you, you do that, you know, and, and, and he felt like that's what we had here. And we started thinking, you know, maybe we were onto something. So we sat down and kind of had a meeting of the minds and, and somebody said, you know, well, if we're going to do this, you know, there's a lot we, we is going to be at stake here. You know, at the time, uh, Nick was still playing with Kenny Chesney. He's been playing with him for the past 12 years. You know, I was still working on solo material with uh, John Legend and Krista Marie had a solo deal as well. And so we we knew there was a lot of things we would have to sacrifice and set aside to be to do the group thing. We had to be all in. And somebody said bet the farm. And that's kind of how our name came about. <laughs> so I think this is a perfect opportunity for you to introduce the song that really began it all for you. Would you do that for us? I will do it. And this is the song that started it all for us. The farm home sweet home. Continuous country favorites on twocountry.net, Eric Church and Carolina. Of course, Eric will be over here on tour in April. Hope you've got your tickets. If you haven't, don't panic. There are still tickets available. And you can visit our website, twocountry.net. Follow the links on our live events page and book your tickets today. Don't miss out. It's going to be an amazing evening. and We hope to see you there. Well, with me is Damien Horn from The Farm. Be grateful. 
Let's talk about that song right now, because oh. this is really connecting with people especially in light of the, the, the current economic climate. I mean, yeah. you know, people are finding it tough. How does it feel knowing that your song is, is really touching people on a level like that? Well, you know, it's, it's, um, it's, it's the best feeling you can get as a, as a musician and as an artist. I know for myself and I speak for the, the rest of the crew that the reason why we, we got in this, um, this business of making music is because we felt we had a talent and we also had the opportunity it had afforded us the opportunity to to touch people's lives and help change and encourage and 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 and, and just um, bring some light to people you know through through music and uh when we heard actually be grateful was the first song that uh we came across that we actually didn't write a good friend of ours uh mark beeson and rodney clausen wrote this song and they just were playing it for us one day and we all simultaneously said we got to cut that song because it's so important for the times it resonated with all three of us and and we felt like if it did for us because we're all three so different and each every one of us simultaneously were like that's an amazing song and so we felt like it would have that effect in 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 the public as well because it touches all demographics it touches the climate like you said the climate of where you know the economy is and, and where life seems to be right now and uh, we just thought it was an important song to hear and a good positive message. You know, it has a line in there that says the things we take for granted now started out as blessings first. And it's just a good reminder that, you know, no matter how tough things get, we all have something to be grateful for. Definitely. And I think there's there's something straight away that country music probably does that, that a lot of genres don't don't right. manage to do. It, it, it really does connect. It, it tells it exactly as it is. It doesn't glorify it in any way. Uh, but it's you know, it's about it's about life. Right, right, right. You know, we always say that country music is real songs about real people, you know, and, and, and that's one of the things that's so um, attractive about this uh, genre of music to me is that you can you can talk about the things that, you know, you go through and, and you can be as real as you are. And uh, you don't have to. You, there's no show. You know what I'm saying? Country music is real songs about real people. You know, it's and, and I like that. It has integrity to it. Yeah. How do you what do you think and, and how do you feel about this? Um, this whole thing surrounding country singers and writers having to have lived the songs that they're actually performing. You know, I, I think I think that helps. I, you know, I, you know, I know personally from, you know, uh, you know, just having a lot of different life experiences when you when you're delivering something on the stage as a performer. You know, when I perform, I always try to go back to that song or like what what I was feeling when I wrote that song or when or when it was created. And so I think I think it's important uh, for me. I just can speak personally for me as an artist, like songs that I sing, you know, most I've written and songs like even be grateful, even even though I didn't write that song. It's something that resonates in me because I've lived some of that and I've been through some of that. And it's just I think it's I think it's the best way of connecting with people. Mm -hmm. You know, people see realness, you know, they can see through fakes and facades. So, you know, I, I think I think it only helps when when an artist is able to has lived that or been through it or can relate in some way to what they're singing. So compared to what you've done before and, and you know, you were enjoying success prior to, to the farm, uh, but kind of looking back, where, where do you prefer being right now? Right where I'm at, right where I'm at. There's so much more that I love about what I'm doing right now. First of all, I love the people that I'm working with. You know, Nick and Chris are like brothers and sisters to me, and uh, and and the whole team that's surrounded. You know, before, you know, I I was working. You know, work. I had the pleasure to work with John Legend, which is an amazing thing. Who's an amazing artist and and person himself. Mm. But during that time, I was still an indie artist, so I I didn't have the team and the support that I have now. You know, and and so. And life and anything in general is just so much easier when you have somebody who's in your corner cheering you on and, and helping you in, in places where I'm not as strong. And, and you know, it takes it takes an, an army to, you know, to really to succeed in life, I think, in anything. And, and I just think the team that I have now and that's surrounded me is it, just phenomenal. It makes it so much easier and, and so much fun. You know, it's, it's so much fun to share it. Too. Another thing I feel about life is like uh, it's just not the same when you when you do these things alone and, unless you have somebody to share it with. And so it's good. I get to share the stage with these guys and, and watch, you know, their dreams come true. My dreams come true. And we be a part of that for each other. Ashley Monroe on Two Country Net. It features uh, the guest vocals of a certain Ronnie Dunn and I Don't Want To.
Ashley has got a brand new album out. It's called Like a Rose. And actually, she's being uh, billed as the most talented female traditional bass newcomer since Leanne Womack. And that's, uh, that's a great honour that's been bestowed on her. And long may she carry that torch as well. It's a good album. Make sure you pick that copy up. You can download it now on iTunes. Or if you can find a good a good reputable record store somewhere, then uh, if you're like me, you might want to pick up the physical copy as well. Or you can always order it uh, as part of a bundle on her website, ashleymonroe.com. Well, on this Tuesday evening, through the wonders of technology, we've got a studio-to-studio -studio link with Damien Horn from the farm. Now, you guys are going to be heading off to Australia soon. Yes, we head Wednesday. You know, we uh, have a we have a radio um, show in Maine, um, and then Wednesday we head to Australia, and we'll be down there for a week. And we're we're super excited about that because we've never been to Australia, of course. And uh, but we're definitely looking to, uh, looking to come your direction as well. So we're we're, we're keeping our eyes open for uh, <laughs> some days in that area. <laughs> well, that was certainly going to be a, a sort of lead off from that. You know, if you're going to Australia, you've got to make that journey. Come see us. Oh, definitely. We definitely will. It, it, it's a, it's a guarantee that will happen. You know, we, we'll take it as far as wide as we can. Yeah, definitely. Well, we'd love to have you because our listeners absolutely adore your music. They really, really do. It's requested so regularly, uh, and it's a real pleasure for us to be able to play that and bring it to them as well. Awesome. Well, we're, we're so very grateful. And we're very thankful for your station and your listeners, it just, it means a lot for us because you you guys are making our dreams come true and, and allowing us to do what we love to do. And so it's a, it's a good relationship. We love it. It's a pleasure. Now, do you guys, uh, when you're out on the road, do you have any pre-show rituals when you're on tour? Yeah, I mean, it switches from time to time. But one thing that Krista and I always do, we always do these things that call, they call blurpees, you know, like before, just, just kind of, uh, energizing kind of exercise move that we do to get ourselves pumped up before the stage. And then we always do some kind of like circle group chant before we go on stage, you know, usually a prayer or we'll say, you know, like we'll kind of get ourselves motivated and hype ourselves up. Almost like we're going out to play, you know, a sporting event because we're that high energy on stage. And that's where I feel like, uh, you know, our best, um, you know, our, our best qualities come out is when we get to get on that stage. It's such a high energy show. You got everything from, Nick ripping on the fiddle, me doing backflips, and Krista's rocking out all the time. So it's just, it's just a crazy spectacle to see. And and, and our band is phenomenal and super high energy. So it, you really got to get up for that game. You know, it's almost like a pregame ritual for football or basketball game. Well, that's something very different for a country concert. Backflips. I, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> it's all about making your mark. Right. You're right. <laughs> so um, who's the messiest? When you're out on tour... It's a, it's a small space, those tour buses. Yes, they are. Yeah. Who's, who's, the, who's the messiest? Now, bearing in mind that the others aren't here to defend themselves. Yeah, that, which, is, which is perfect. You know? <laughs> That's why I love that I, I'm the one that gets to represent this. No, uh, the messiest. <laughs> I would have, you know what? I have to say I'm probably the messiest out of the <laughs> three. To be honest, I'm probably the messiest out of the three, you know? And Nick is a close second, and then Krista, of course, she's the girl. She's she's always cleaning up behind the boys, and yeah. she's, she gets on as well. She's the uh, she's the queen bee. Little OCD on the cleanliness, yeah. Yes, yes. <laughs> Someone's got to keep you boys in order. Right, exactly. That's a good job. <laughs> so when you're out on on the road and that, I mean, you know, it can't be easy grabbing meal time, etc. The schedules are so tight and they're so busy. What do you kind of do for eats? What what's the favorite eats on the bus? You know, we have, you know, we've really gotten better at trying to eat healthier. You know, that's kind of like been our goal um, near the end of last year and, and starting into this year. So we really get a lot of like fruit. We get a lot of vegetables on the bus, you know, and we, we of course, we always, you know, break down and uh, have a late night pizza after the show sometimes. But <laughs> for the most part, you know, we, we keep the bus pretty stocked with fruits and vegetables, you know, just stuff you can snack on throughout the day. And, and uh, so we're, we're trying to get better at that. That's that's our goal. Fast food's easy, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, so, that's so easy. Yeah, that's definitely the easy route. <laughs> Domino's knocking on the tour bus door right, at midnight. Right. <laughs> oh, fantastic. What do you like doing in your downtime, Damien? Um, I'm, I'm, I'm a, a big sports advocate. You know, I watch sports. I play sports all the time. And if, if not that, you know, I'm reading. You know, I constantly, you know, 
I'm, I'm a minister, so I'm constantly reading my Bible or some type of inspir inspirational book or, or something like that. So that's usually what I do in my downtime. I do a lot of reading. And if, if not that, I'm, I'm out somewhere shooting basketball or, you know, whatever, just something to keep myself uh, moving, active. It's important to, to take every moment that you can, free time, you know. Right. It, it it really is, you know that you know one of the things you learn about the business after being in it for a while is is you know you spend maybe five to ten percent of your time as an artist being on the stage, and that's the part that everybody sees and the part that you really love and is kind of what drew you to the business. And then you have the ninety to ninety five percent of all the work that goes behind it to get to that point, you know. And it's a and and it, it can take up a lot of your time. And it can be wearing you know it can wear on a person so anytime you have personal time it's, it's just important for me i have to get away and kind of re-energize and recoup and just like and, and get in the right mind frame because you know you're representing yourself you represent you know the band the farm and, and those people who support you you know and you always want to give them your best so that's why it is important to take your personal it's time. mel haggard on your favorite country music radio station on this tuesday evening one of those heritage acts and and this is a term that i've really come to love following the CMA International Marketing Summit in Paris just a, a few weeks back now. But uh, Heritage Act, the heritage of country music and the legends that have brought country music to where it is today, the pioneers. Uh, the CMA likes to refer to them as, as Heritage Acts, and I actually really like that. I think it, it's befitting of what they've done. Well, I am joined by Damien Horn from The Farm. And uh, Damien, uh, you do a lot of charity work. How important is that to you? Well, it's 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 just as important as, you know, it's it's the most important thing, honestly. You know, the, the music that we do and the platform that we have, it's just a tool to do those type of things, you know. And if, you know, and I know Chris and Nick agree, if they weren't doing music, you know, if, if I was a janitor at a, at, a, at a school, I'd still be trying to do some type of charity or do something to give back to people. Mm -hmm. Whatever that tool is, music just happens to be our tool, our way of doing that and, and allows us the platform to give back. And so it's the most important things. We feel, we really feel like su success without significance to it. It's really it has no point. You know, if we're just going to go on stage and, and make money and, and, and accept all this glory and that kind of thing and, and do nothing with it, then it's just all futile. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you actually support a number of charities too, don't you? Yes, um, I'm very big uh, Salvation Army advocate. Uh, very big with St. Jude, uh, Victory Junction. I mean, the list goes on and on. You know, we're we're, we're constantly involved with you know uh, youth youth things and youth charities. Uh, that stuff is important, you know. And I I personally know because it's um, you know it's it's helped me throughout my life. You know, growing up uh, um, places like the Covenant House and in uh, LA, you know, which which is a homeless shelter for people 18 to 21 years old, uh, I, where I used to live, you know, and uh, and so places like that need funding and they need help. And, you know, when I, you know, when a place like that has helped me throughout my life and now I'm in a position to give back, it's just, it seems only right to do so. Yeah. Well, we're going to be back with Damien Horn in just a few moments and uh, we're going to have to let him go soon because with a flight to Australia tomorrow, uh, he's going to need to to get his head down and some shut eye, that's for sure. But this is Dirks Bentley. It's a song that I absolutely love. It's called Midnight Radio. Jana Kramer on Two Country Net and her current chart entry, Whiskey, which is sitting at number 33 right now. It's a, had a little drop on the chart this week. And just a reminder that if you'd like to find out how your favourite country artists are doing on the chart week by week, then join me every Saturday from four and we can count down the top 10 hottest country songs on the Billboard Country chart in association with our good friends at kissthefrog.com for all your creative design needs. Now, we're going to have to let him go shortly because, uh, as I mentioned, there is a flight to Australia to catch. But I am joined uh, by Damien Horn, who is one third of the farm. Now, um, a question that we ask of everyone that we talk to. If, if there was one song, one song that you wish you had written, what would that song be? Um... I really love that song. Um, it was not too long ago. Miranda Lambert did it, and um, the song is called "The House That Built Me." But um, I, I got to meet the original writer at um, uh, one of the awards here, Songwriter Awards in town. His name was Alan Shepard, and um, 
but that song just touches me because it, it, it reminds me of my childhood and the things I went through and I and I grew up and and it formed me into the person I am. It just kind of talks about how, you know, your environment, and your life and the things that you learned when you were younger and, and those things in that home that, you know, where you learn security or you love or whatever you learned in that home is it shaped you the house to be. I just think it was so well written. And then when I saw the writer perform it, it just took on a whole nother meaning for me. And it was that kind of goes back to your question when like, you know, the person who's lived it, like, you know, and I love Miranda's version of it and she's phenomenal on it. But when I watched the writer who is not as good of a singer and is not well known, but he's the guy who penned it, uh, perform it, it just took on a whole nother meaning for me. Yeah, well, I mean, we've just had that same experience. We've been taking part in the, the CMA Songwriter Series. Uh, and okay. we, we've just had uh, Chris Young, Bob DiPiero, uh, Christian Bush, and Brett James. And I've been a big Brett James fan. Yes, yeah, so I like Brett James as well. Yeah, yeah. and well, never really understood why the vocal career didn't take off. Personally, right. I love the debut album. Right. But um, one song I really I had no idea he'd written was The Truth. Jason, oh. Jason Aldean recorded it. Yes, yes. And I'm with you in the fact that uh, the whole, the, the song that stole the whole show and the performance that stole the whole show for me over here in the UK and in Paris as well, was Brett James singing the truth. Because I don't think I've seen for a while anyway such raw emotion delivered in a song. Right. And that's, man, that's, that's the thing that, I'm, that I always say, that's, that's the realness that you can't, you can't fake, you can't mock, you can't drum it up. It's just, it's real. That's the real, like, you know, he's the writer, he lived it, he experienced it and it, and he can deliver it with that type of emotion because when you sing it or you perform it, you go right back there. So when I see that, man, it's inspiring to me too. Yeah. Excellent. Now, can we expect more singles from the, the current album or is there an album number two on the horizon? Well, there's a there's a combination of both going on. We're constantly, constantly writing. You know, we're all songwriters, so we, you know, it's just kind of second nature. You know, and like you said, in our downtime, you know, that sometimes that's what we do. We're writing because we constantly love to create and just um, and be doing that. So we're already working on a second album. You can expect more from this album, but you know, you also can expect, you know. Who knows? There's so many different ways of, you know, being able to promote your music and push music out, you know, and even if we feel like there's something we've written that is not on the album yet, don't be surprised to see that, you know what I'm saying? So it's just like, you know, anything's possible, you know, and, and that's just the way we look at it. We've always looked at it that way, you know, you know, three, you got three totally different people who are coming together to make uh, this music. And a lot of people would have never thought it, it could work out and, and look what's happened. So we don't put any limitations or any bars on on what we what we can dream of yeah and it sounds very much like you know bearing in mind that there were very separate careers and successful careers it does sound from the way you're talking damien that the farm is definitely here to stay totally it totally is you know and we, we it's it's confirmed every time we get together you know we we're, we're here for the long haul we'll be we'll be doing interviews with you 10 years 20 years down the line <laughs> you can count on that. Oh, we hope so Indeed. Well, look, Damien, it has been an absolute pleasure to, to chat with you briefly this evening or this afternoon for you. Thank you so much for taking the time to talk to us. I really, really do appreciate it. Thank you so much too, Rob. I enjoyed it. Damien Horn from the farm, and we wish them all the very best as they embark on their Australian tour. Hopefully, in the not-too-distant future, there'll be a visit to the UK as well. Who knows? Could be a C2C event. That would be pretty good, wouldn't it? I think it's time we spoke about the song earlier on, but uh, I think it's time to play the song that is really touching hearts around the world right now. And it is The Farm. Be grateful on twocountry.net. New music from Greg Bates on twocountry.net. It's Tuesday evening and how lovely to be able to talk to Damien Horn from The Farm. There is one of country music supergroups right now. They're doing great things. Their music touching people. It's really catchy too. And I think they're going to have a great career ahead of themselves. And it was so nice of him to give up some time just before heading out to Australia. He heads out on an Australian tour and uh, I hope he gets an early night tonight. That's for sure because it's a long old flight it's very very tiring and although you, you can sleep on a plane 27 hours in the air uh, you know that's a bit rough really I, I don't think i could do that my mother's done it my mum went to see relations out in australia 27 hours i think she said all in all and i just don't think i could do that i'm good with long haul but 27 hours is pushing it just a little bit 
Well, we will take our look back in country music history, just in case you thought we'd neglected that. After I play you Brooks and Dunn, she was born to run on 2country.net.